Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here. Today I want to talk to you guys about the new Arrow release, the Hellraiser Blu-ray box set featuring the first three Hellraiser films, Hellraiser, Hellbound Hellraiser 2, and Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. This is a Region B locked set, which means you will either need a Region B Blu-ray player or a region free Blu-ray player in order to play these discs. Now this is also not the um, Scarlet edition of this box set which Arrow released late last year which was just an absolutely gorgeous, just beautiful looking set including these three films and a lot more. Correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that was a limited run and it's no longer uh, in print. They, they, they sold out. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I also recall that that set was a bit pricey. This is the more affordable, uh, more mass-produced version of the set. It's all three films in this box. This is not going to be a review, uh, including uh, the films, although I've had many people ask for a Hellraiser series review, uh, and I promise I will get around to reviewing. I almost said all of the Hellraiser films, but... Um, some of those latter Hellraiser films, they are very, very difficult to get through. Um, I managed to get through them. I suffered through them uh, once, and I don't know if I can bear the torment, the exquisite suffering uh, that those latter Hellraiser films bring about uh, to do uh, a proper review of the entire series, but I'll at least at least review the first four, possibly the first five Hellraiser films um, at, um, at a future date which I think that'll be very, very cool. Love those movies, um, and um, I love this box set, so I'm going to just talk about, really, the set itself, all the extras, and let me tell you, this set is loaded down with extras. Um, Arrow has given us a very nice box for this set. It's not flimsy at all. Very well made. They did not skimp on the materials for this box. Very sturdy box. We have all three films with new... Um, cover arts. Here's Hellraiser, here's Hellraiser 2, here's Hellraiser 3. Um, if you don't like the new cover art, what you can do, I left the Hellraiser 3 disc out on purpose because these sleeves are reversible. So if you don't like this new art, you can flip the sleeve around and there you have the original poster art for Hellraiser 3. So nice addition there uh, by the fine folks over at Aero. And as I said, absolutely loaded with, with special features and extras. I took notes because you guys know that's what I do. Um, try to be thorough, try to be detailed for you guys. And um, so let's start with Hellraiser. And the cherry on the top of the Hellraiser Sunday for this release is really uh, the Leviathan documentary. Uh, it's broken into two parts. The first part of the Leviathan documentary just focuses on Hellraiser. If you're unaware of what the Leviathan documentary is, it's a multi-hour <laughs> documentary about the making of Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Think of, um, you know, C Crystal Lake Memories or uh, Never Sleep Again, those documentaries for Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, respectively. Think of those documentaries, but for Hellraiser. Um, so it's just the part focusing on Hellraiser is an hour and a half itself. It's a feature length documentary just on the original Hellraiser with interviews from everybody. The only two people that I did not see them interview on this documentary for the original Hellraiser was Clive Barker and Ashley Lawrence. Aside from that, you're talking about the producer, you're talking about the writer, you're talking about stars, you're talking about um, everyone from the makeup department to uh, Christopher Young, uh, the composer to uh, just everybody. Very, very exhaustively in-depth, detailed documentary about the making of Hellraiser. Anything and everything you could possibly want to know about Hellraiser is in this documentary. Like I said, hour and a half feature length documentary just about the making of Hellraiser. Uh, we also have an interview with Sean Chapman entitled Being Frank. Of course, John, Sean Chapman played Frank in the original Hellraiser and uh, briefly in Hellbound Hellraiser 2. I'd never seen him interviewed before, so that was very interesting to hear him talk about. He talked about his early career, uh, you know, ha ha being a young actor, of course, eventually getting in, uh, in, into Hellraiser uh, and working with Clive Barker and everybody on that set. And um, 
is interesting. He talked about uh, um, his character being dubbed. His character was dubbed in Hellraiser. Uh, it's not his voice. It's that very sort of flat, <laughs> monotone, gruff American accent um, that just it just it, it feels out of place. It just feels out of place. Of course, they use his voice in Hellbound Hellraiser too for the the, the, the short time he's in that film. Uh, but whenever I think of that voice. I think of, and this is uh, a part with Skinless Frank, who actually Sean Chapman did not play Skinless Frank. Another actor did. Um, but I always think of the line where he goes, Come here, damn you, I want to touch you. And I've always wondered, would that work? Would that work on a lady if I said, Come here, damn you, I want to touch you? I might, I might, I don't know. No, I, I just don't see that flying. I just don't see that going over. Uh, but 26-minute documentary or 26-minute interview with Sean Chapman about his role in the original Hellraiser. Very interesting to hear him interviewed because I'd never heard him interviewed um, before. So very interesting. Uh, we've got the original EPK, which is about six minutes. It's on-set interviews with Barker, uh, Bob King, Claire Higgins, Andrew Robertson, Ashley Lawrence, talking about the making of the film, etc., etc. Uh, we also have a um, a uh, interview with a former Coil member. Stephen, uh, I believe that's Thruer, on the abandoned Hellraiser score. And I did not know this. Um, there was, um, before Christopher Young got involved in composing the Hellraiser score, Clive Barker had uh, met this gentleman from the band Coil and had asked him to do some music for Hellraiser. And they've actually got some, some music, um, they, they, they feature some music in this um, interview. And... Uh, I actually thought the music sounded really cool. It was very avant-garde. It sounded almost like um, something from It Follows, like music from It Follows. So it's interesting to kind of hear that kind of music set to a scene in Hellraiser. Um, I can understand why they didn't use it, because like I said, it's very avant-garde. It's very sort of... It's an, it's, it's an anti-score <laughs> kind of score, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I really thought the music was kind of cool for the most part. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I'd never heard that before until now. Um, I seem to recall Christopher Young talking about it just briefly in other interviews that he wasn't the first choice. Um, but yeah, I mean, these uh, this band Coil, they they pretty much had done an entire score and um, it just it never got used. But um, yeah, it's, um, I thought it was pretty interesting, uh, interesting music. Um, and yeah, that's about an 18 minute interview with him. Um, we've got uh, Hellraiser Resurrection, a vintage making of featurette with interviews with Clive Barker, Ashley Lawrence, Bob King, Doug Bradley. Um, that's been included on some previous Hellraiser releases. I know it was included on the Hellraiser DVD, the Anchor Bay version here in the States. But again, very lengthy, very in-depth making of a documentary. Uh, if you've not seen it, it's again very detailed very informative uh we've got under the skin uh which uh is an interview with doug bradley it's a vintage interview this was also on some of the prior dvd uh and blu-ray releases uh we've got audio commentary with cloud barker and audio commentary with cloud barker and ashley lawrence we've got uh, trailers tv spots and an image gallery um we've got a brand new 2k restoration approved by director of photography robin vigin for this film um and high def 1080p Blu-ray presentation. I have to say, I thought the movie looked fantastic. I thought it looked beautiful. It looked crisp. It looked clean. It looked fantastic. Anchor Bay has done a phenomenal job with this transfer. The movie looks great. Like I said, it's it's clear. It's crisp. Some of the sequences in the film look like they were shot yesterday, and not all the way back in. 86, 87, whenever they were shot. They look fantastic. Um, we have got the audio. It's uh, uncompressed PCM Stereo 2.0 lossless DTS HD MA 5.1 sound. I have no idea what that means, uh, but the movie sounded really, <laughs> really good. So we've got great picture quality, phenomenal picture quality, I would say, for this release, and really good sound quality as well. So the Hellraiser, the original Hellraiser, it looks great, it sounds great, loaded with special features. Um, as for Hellraiser 2, we have the continuation of the Leviathan documentary talking about Hellbound Hellraiser 2. It's about two hours long. 
anything and everything you could possibly want to know about the making of Hellraiser 2 is right here. Interviews with, again, just about everybody associated with Hellraiser 2, with the exception of Clive Barker and Ashley Lawrence, were interviewed. Exhaustive, informative, super detailed. The Leviathan documentary is enough to really buy this box set itself. If you're a Hellraiser or a Hellbound Hellraiser 2 fan, this documentary makes this box set worth the buy, I think, alone. You've got three and a half hours of Leviathan talking about Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2. As I said, exhaustively detailed, super informative. Um, we've got uh, another interview uh, with Sean Chapman just talking about Hellbound Hellraiser 2. It's a little over 11 minutes. Um, he, he talks about Hellraiser 2, uh, but I, he makes it sound like it wasn't as satisfying or rewarding a process working on Hellraiser 2 as it was working on the original Hellraiser. Uh, he just seemed really unsatisfied with the entire thing, with just the movie in and of itself, with working on it, with working with Tony Randall, etc., etc. Um, just He's not a fan of Hellbound Hellraiser 2. <laughs> just put it that way. Not a fan of Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Uh, we have also got the uh, infamous uh, deleted footage from the surgeon scene. If you guys aren't aware of what this is, um, on the uh, back of the original VHS release of Hellraiser 2, there was an image, and I vividly remember it, of Pinhead and the female Cenobite in surgical scrubs. And of course, there is no scene in the film with Pinhead or the female Cenobite in surgical scrubs. So, of course, uh, it's just been this infamous, you know, everybody wants to see this footage and what happened to the footage and why wasn't it included and where is it and how can we see it, etc., etc. It's on this disc. It's only maybe a couple of minutes. You can totally understand why it was excised because it really doesn't do much. And, of course, it, it involved a pretty high-tech special effect involving uh, pinheads makeup, uh, pins coming through the surgical mask and blood pouring out and yeah they just decided not to use it not even to try the special effects on it it just kind of doesn't do anything for the story and i totally understand why it was excised but it's cool that it's on this release because so many people have wanted to see it and so many people have, have, have wondered about it for so long well here it is you can watch it it's like i said about two minutes i think at the end of it you'll totally understand why it was cut from the film um we have got uh, Lost in the Labyrinth. It's a 16-minute vintage making of feature with interviews with Tony Randall, Clive Barker, Pete Atkins, Bob Keen, Doug Bradley, Ashley Lawrence. Of course, that was on uh, some of the previous uh, Hellraiser 2 DVD and Blu-ray releases. Um, we have got Under the Skin, another uh, vintage interview with Doug Bradley about shooting Hellraiser 2. Uh, it's about 10 and a half minutes. Uh, we've got on-set interviews with Clive Barker and cast and crew. Uh, the Clive Barker segment is about three minutes long, and uh, the cast and crew, which includes uh, Tony Randall, Claire Higgins, Ashley Lawrence, uh, Imogen Borman, and Ken Cranham, is about five minutes. Of course, we're just talking about their characters, talking about you know shooting the film, etc., etc. <clears throat> Um, we have got some behind-the-scenes footage as well, about two minutes of that, uh, just uh, on the set, uh, stuff in the makeup room, creating monsters, Tony Randall setting up shots, um, this and that. Pretty pretty interesting, brief, but, but pretty interesting. Uh, we've got two commentaries on this disc. We've got a commentary with Tony Randall and Peter Atkins and a uh, commentary with Tony Randall, Ashley Lawrence and Peter Atkins. We've got trailer spot, or trailers, TV spots, and galleries. Uh, this movie, like the original, has a brand new 2K transfer uh, approved by Robin Bidgeon and the same sound specs. Um, I actually thought the original Hellraiser looked better. The picture quality looked a little bit better than the picture quality on Hellraiser 2. They both sounded great. That's not to say that, that Hellraiser 2 didn't look fantastic uh, in this 2K transfer, because it did. Um, but after watching Hellraiser and then going into Hellraiser 2, I was like, okay, so... Hellraiser looked a little bit better uh, as far as the new HD transfer. Uh, but again, not taking anything away from how Hellraiser 2 looked. It still looked fantastic. It sounded great. So Hellraiser 2, packed, packed disc. Great transfer. Great sound quality. Yeah. Uh, Hellraiser 3, and I was really interested um, in the Hellraiser 3 disc and the extras on the Hellraiser 3 disc because 
I've heard people talking. I, you know, I've 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 seen interviews with cast and crew, Clive Barker, Ashley Lawrence, Doug Bradley, Bob Keen, Pete Atkins, those people uh, like that. Other cast, other crew, talking about the original Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser two. I've never really seen an interview or a documentary or anything about the making of Hellraiser 3. So I was really interested in what's on the Hellraiser 3 disc. And there's not as much on the Hellraiser 3 disc as, of course, the Hellraiser or Hellraiser 2 disc. But there's still quite a bit to sink your teeth into or your hooks into uh, if you're a Hellraiser 3 fan or you're interested about hearing about the making of Hellraiser 3. Um, we have got a 30 minute documentary called The Story of Hellraiser 3. Uh, it's a making of with interviews with Doug Bradley, Ken Carpenter, uh, Peter Atkins, Christopher Figg, Tony Randall, uh, and Bob King. They talk about how uh, basically after Hellraiser 2, New World Pictures, they went in the tank. Nobody knew who owned, you know, they still own the rights to Hellraiser but they're not around anymore. So this new producer came in and he somehow got the rights and he wanted to make a Basically, a um, he wanted to turn Pinhead into a Freddy Krueger clone, more or less, just another slasher. He wanted a very mainstream kind of slasher movie. He, did, he, he really wanted to kick off his own sort of, you know, series and make, you know, the Hellraiser films into a franchise, but a different kind of franchise than uh, you know, what New World and what, uh, you know, Christopher Figg and Clive Walker had in mind. Um, and initially, he wanted, like I said, mainstream. He wanted the MTV Hellraiser. Uh, the MTV, you know, <laughs> Freddy Krueger version um, of Pinhead. Um, so, yeah, it, it, was, it was a different feel making that film. However, and of course, they shot the film in the States as well. Um, but it's interesting because everybody who worked on the film said that they had an absolute blast. Even the people who came over, they, they had worked on the first two Hellraisers and were working on Hellraiser 3 as well. They say by far Hellraiser 3 was the most fun uh, film to work on. Uh, actually, the first time I ever met Doug Bradley at a convention, I asked him which Hellraiser was his favorite, favorite to film, and he said Hellraiser 3. So apparently they were very... Uh, <laughs> They were very naughty offset, put it that way. They had a lot of fun uh, when the cameras weren't rolling on Hellraiser 3. But again, uh, 30 minutes, uh, pretty informative, really interesting uh, documentary about the making of Hellraiser 3. I, I really enjoyed watching it. felt like I learned a lot about Hellraiser 3. We've got a 14-minute interview with Paula Marshall called Time with Terry. Of course, Paula Marshall played the character of Terry in the film. Um, she tells a very interesting story about being recognized by John Cusack at a Bruce Springsteen concert. And Cusack's like, I know you. Where do I know you from? Have we have we worked together? Have we were, were you in this? Were you in that? And she's like, no, no, no. And finally he goes, Hellraiser 3. <laughs> and she's like, what is John Cusack doing watching Hellraiser 3? But yeah, she got recognized by John Cusack at a Bruce Springsteen concert from her role in Hellraiser 3. Um, we have got a 13 and a half minute interview with Anthony Hickox called Raising Hell on Earth, talking about how he got hired to shoot the film, how um, uh, about the shooting process for the movie, how when the Weinsteins got involved, they gave him some more money to go out and shoot some other scenes, some, some, some bigger scenes, some more elaborate scenes for the film. Uh, never, never, uh, <laughs> never seen or heard an interview with Anthony Hickox and... Um, I've really liked several of Anthony Hickox's films, including Hellraiser 3. He also did uh, Waxwork, which I, I love that movie he did Waxwork too, which I've not seen in a long time. Um, but, um, yeah, really interesting to see uh, and hear an interview with him. So that was cool. Uh, we've got Under the Skin, an interview with Doug Bradley on Hellraiser 3, just over 13 minutes. Um, he, he talks about how um, the original idea for Hellraiser 3 if um, Clive and Chris Figg were going to be involved, was to take Hellraiser back in time. Uh, and Hellraiser, it, basically he explained it as Hellraiser in ancient Egypt. And that a pyramid was actually the original um, lament configuration. Not sure how that would work, but sounds pretty interesting. Uh, and there was also a, another version of Hellraiser 3, um, in which Pinhead was resurrected in a church 
and uh, it, it involved something to do with the whorehouse as well. Uh, of course, those ideas were thrown out, and Hellraiser, we got the Hellraiser 3 that we see on screen. Of course, everybody talks about, again, that this was his favorite Hellraiser to shoot, how much fun he had making the film, etc., etc., etc. We've got uh, the original EPK uh, for Hellraiser 3, which includes interviews with Cloud Barker and Doug Bradley. It's just over five minutes in length. Uh, we've got actually footage from the Motorhead Hellraiser music video that Clive Barker directed, of course, which has Pinhead and Lemmy playing chess in it, which, how friggin' awesome is that? That's part of <laughs> the EPK. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, we've got 25 minutes worth of FX Daily. Special effects daily is basically footage of hooks ripping through flesh, um, Pinhead's first um, uh, per first victim in the pillar. We get to watch how they did that. Uh, the death of JP. Uh, stuff from the nightclub massacre. 25 minutes of just special effects footage. <laughs> uh, we've got two commentaries on this disc. We've got a commentary with Peter Atkins for the theatrical cut. And a commentary with Anthony Hickox, Doug Bradley. Anthony Hickox and Doug Bradley for the unrated version. Uh, yes, we have two versions of the film on this disc. Uh, I believe the unrated version is like four minutes longer than the theatrical version. Okay. Uh, we've got trailers uh, and galleries. And uh, let me just make sure what um, what is on. Yeah, we've got a brand new 2K restoration of the original theatrical version, which is 93 minutes. And the alternate unrated version, which is 97 minutes. High definition, 1080p, Blu-ray pleasant presentation. I've talked for too long. Uh, and of course, the same... Uh, audio specs as the other two. Um, I thought the movie looked fantastic. Uh, I thought it looked crisp. I thought it looked pretty clean. Um, not quite as good as the original Hellraiser, um, but still looked very well. The audio quality, of course, was was very good as well. Um, I really think Arrow has done a phenomenal job with this Blu-ray box set. Uh, if you were unable to get your hands on uh, the Scarlet edition of this box set, this is definitely the way to go. This is the more affordable version. You get all three films, tons and tons of special features. I've talked for 22 minutes, so that's 22 minutes of just talking about the special features on this disc. Hours and hours of extras. If you're a fan of the first three Hellraiser movies, this is certainly the way to go. Like I said, the Leviathan documentary, I think, makes this box set worth the price of admission alone um, again this is a region b locked set so you will need a region b player or a region free player to watch these discs and uh, watch these discs i do recommend that you do this is a really great set from arrow arrow pretty much always knocks the ball out of the park um, and um, this set is absolutely no exception so go Pick it up. I'll put a link to the Arrow website in the description. Go check them out. Um, yeah. Great, great box set. And that's it. Um, if you purchased this set or if you purchased the Scarlet edition of the box set, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section uh, below. Um, if you've seen the Leviathan documentary, please let me know uh, your thoughts on it in the comments section below. I understand um, aside from like the the documentary there's hours and hours and hours of extras <laughs> associated with that documentary as well so just uh, hellraiser overload hellraiser overload with that documentary um but yeah uh as always thanks so much for watching i really appreciate it take care and until next time peace